Again, and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. A word again to our viewers. You're ready. You can, you can feel free to call in at any time with any of the subject matters we're discussing today. We're going to move on along, along now with our third subject matter and take a look at the headline. Poverty Plan Crucial, Activists Says. There you go. Now, what's behind this story is this. It's been discussed and it keeps on gaining the headlines of business news that we're going to face. In fact, perhaps we're seeing it already south of the border and we tend to be affected by anything that goes on in the States. There's a sneeze over there. We're going to feel it over here, primarily in Ontario. Now, there's a predicted economic downturn that we're all looking for. A group of poverty advocates have said here, we've got to start looking out specifically for the poor that because of this downturn, there needs to be put in place an anti-poverty strategy immediately by the Ontario government. Now, of course, we're going to hear both sides of the issue. Look, when, a, when recession hits, we don't know who's going to be affected and how. You're going to find middle class people that are going to be drastically affected. They're going to end up part of what, what's known as the poor in this country. It's, there's no simple solution. When something like this hits, people end up losing their houses. The poor get poorer, as they say. The rich get richer. So the question is, do we need to put a poverty plan in place? Do we know enough to put one in place? And how do we do so? It's been suggested here that we need to look at issues like minimum wage, perhaps increasing minimum wage. This is something yeah. that's been discussed uh, <laughs> quite a bit. That's one of the a, strategies. I don't think we need a poverty plan. I think we need a wealth plan. And we need a plan to make our nation wealthier, make our province wealthier, and forget about poverty. Because if you're, all you're thinking about is poverty, that's where you're going to head. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Well, now, the way to create wealth mm -hmm. is to do almost everything the opposite of what's being advocated by the so-called poverty. <laughs> People mm -hmm. want to eliminate poverty. I've heard it all before. I've got newspaper clippings going back years and years and years that read exactly like that. We've got to start a poverty plan. We're going to wipe out child poverty by the year 2000. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it's all ridiculous because it's based on a completely false assumption that poverty is somehow uh, the, that it can be erased just magically by giving people money or taking money from those who earn it and giving it to those who don't. That doesn't eliminate poverty. Poverty is a much broader condition. And if you want to identify poverty, to define it, which is a big issue that they talk about, uh, we only talk about relative poverty. If you've got Peter and Paul on an island by themselves and they're both poor, dirt poor, then neither of us would consider them poor. But as soon as one of them worked, and created some wealth and built a little hut, he'd be rich and the other guy would be poor and that would be the end of it. And all of a sudden, that man's virtue who built something is considered evil and the person who did nothing is considered deserving and needs the other person's help. And that is a very destructive philosophy, I think, to any society that practices it and that's what you see in most government programs. It's a different matter. It's totally different from charity, from other ways of helping, but when the government gets into it, they can't do anything. Government has no resources of its own. It takes them from other people. Those other people are invariably the middle class. The middle class gets beat from both ends through corporate welfare and through welfare for the poor, and that's why they're hurting so much. So I, I, don't, I don't know what solution you're going to have other than a layoff, lower taxes, um, you know, get rid of the minimum wages for heaven's sake. You don't, don't need the minimum wage. If you can't afford to work for something that somebody's going to offer you, you won't work for them. It's automatic that you wouldn't do so, wouldn't you? Michael. Well, yeah, go to it, Michael. <laughs> you know, we, Canada and, and, and Ontario and, uh, and, and Southern Ontario in particular in the last 10, 15 years has been fantastically wealthy. We've generated more wealth than we've ever generated in the history of this region. And yet, we've also generated more poverty. And uh, yes, you can measure poverty in things like the number of people who are evicted because they can't pay their rent. You can measure poverty uh, in terms of the number of people who can't afford to put food on the table uh, and therefore are starving. They're going for days without, uh, for a day without eating and they have to go to food banks in order to get food. So you can measure poverty. But what's important is that many countries around the world are realizing that there are in fact effective strategies to end poverty. The United Kingdom has a, a strategy to end poverty. Ireland has one of the best strategies to end poverty. So there's no poverty uh, and, over and, there? And Newfoundland and Labrador, and it's, it's being reduced. What's Newfoundland and Labrador has adopted one. What, okay, before, before we go on, here's what the group wants. Okay, one of them is to raise the minimum wage, another strategy to provide more affordable housing, another one, well, the government needs to define poverty. 
so there needs to be more input on how you even define poverty. And the other one is, well, that was it. That was it, because there's been a lot of debate around this. Now, I'm curious here, because you're talking about that they found certain strategies to put in place to do this. How do you do it? Like, like how, what strategies do we need? Well, it's very simple. If you want to eliminate poverty, you've got to get more money in the pockets of poor people. And I'll tell you, one way you don't do that uh, is by the kind of cuts that we've seen. In the last 15 years, we've seen things like cutting income assistance programs like welfare. There was a brilliant idea. Take money away from the poorest people in our society, give it to the richest people in the form of tax cuts, which is the brilliant idea that's been followed over the last 15 years. What does that do? It makes poor people even poorer. The, the uh, people who are forced uh, onto welfare in this society are living on less money than they've ever lived before, yet rents are up. The cost of food is up, the cost of energy is up, life is much more miserable. So the very simple solutions are to get more money into the pockets of Okay, we're going to have to go people. for a break, but here's an argument I hear, and I want you to, I'd, I'd like you to answer it after the break, that to raise the minimum wage, you end up actually creating a huge problem in that there are a lot of employers out there that could only afford to hire people on minimum wage. So what you end up happening, what, en what ends up happening is you raise that, a lot of these very people lose their jobs, and another theory talks about relativity. You raise the bottom okay, the, the minimum wage up this level, then obviously you have the higher level and that's going to bounce up as well. So you're always going to have a sort of a, a, an equilibrium in society with the poorest and the wealthiest that'll just keep going up all the time because everything is relative in terms of spending. I'd like to hear how you're going to address this. We're going to do so after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome again back to Viewpoints on the Line. Michael, solutions to the poverty crisis. Well, we, we, the most fundamental solution is obviously to address the needs of poor people. Now, last summer, TD Economics, which is not exactly a, a left-wing uh, anti-poverty uh, group of activists, it's the branch of the TD Bank. Uh, they very much believe in uh, all of the things the banks believe in. But they said uh, the GTA economy, the Greater Toronto Area economy, is the economic locomotive of Canada. It's generating fantastic amounts of wealth, but also huge amounts of poverty. They said we need to have income assistance programs. We need to address the minimum wage. Need to address that, though, the minimum wage that was something we we're on before the break yeah well could you do so based on the, the arguments that you hear well there was a guy named henry ford a few years ago uh, who uh, said uh, what he wanted to do is pay his workers enough so they could buy his cars uh, he didn't and, run to and, the government and, and tell and, them and, 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 and uh, <laughs> that was a, that was a brilliant idea and now a lot of employers now are saying they'd rather keep people in poverty and let and, and let somebody else deal Name with one. the problem Name but, employer but who said any that employer that hires somebody at minimum wage is saying i don't care about the consequences because in this oh, really? in this province i could introduce you in to this a province, few in and this they province, make less than the people that they Pay. Province, so what you do they cannot, care about you cannot live on a minimum wage and pay rent uh, or uh, put food on the table, raise a family. Would we ever be able to, though? Like, even if the minimum wage eventually, and I'm going to give an obscene figure here, goes up to $20 an hour, obviously the upper realms will go higher to suit. So I, I'm concerned about this. You, you How do you, you ever... Can't no, I, I'm really asking you this. No, How no, do you... The, the, well, you look at countries that actually have wage policies, like the Scandinavian countries, where they actually say people should, who work hard should get paid uh, a reasonable wage to work uh, uh, an amount that they can actually live on, a living wage. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and they, in fact, are blazing... Uh, their economies are blazing the world. They're, they've Michael. got good corporate uh, uh, sectors, strong corporate sectors, and the employers are not saying, let's see how low we can drive it and how much we can squeeze mm -hmm out of our workers, they're saying, uh, we'll actually pay our workers a fair wage and we'll expect them to do a fair day's work. Now you said, just before the break, you said the solution was to get more money into the pockets of poor people. Uh, how do you do that? Whose money is that money that you're putting into their pockets, and where is it coming from? Well, the money is coming from this economy, which is generating fantastic amounts uh, of, of the wealth. The economy, no, no, and, I want and, a specific. And, economy is all of us, everything. That's just, that's just pie-in-the-sky magic. The that, you uh, haven't, that's not a plan. That's the, not a plan at all. The, and the government... You're going to take it from working people, aren't you? No, you're going to take it from, uh, through the government from yep. a tax system, yep, which from is working a, fair, people. A, fair, okay. a fair tax system. Uh, I think you should tax wealth. Okay, and then and, and, I think and, that's and, criminal. I and, think that's and, immoral. And, well, but. well, there you go. Because we disagree. I think government should reflect the values of people. Most Canadians say people shouldn't starve to death. Uh, people shouldn't uh, be forced to live in substandard housing. People shouldn't uh, be forced to live in those kinds of conditions. And that one of the roles of government is to reflect our collective values. That we should all help each other. Okay, and, so, and so, so we should have a progressive tax so system. That's what, what we've we have. had in the last ten years. Is we've had a tax system. For instance, Paul Martin in the year 2000 cut 100 billion dollars uh, out of the federal 
federal tax system. Where do you think that, when he cut those taxes, it was health care funding, it was funding for affordable housing, it was funding for income assistance. Why do you think we have such a problem in our health care system now? Well, when not you because of that. Out, he when could you have the money, the money of, to the health care system. The money out of the health care system, of course you get longer waiting lists. No, no, no. It's, no. It just, the, the, the just, two are absolutely connected. Economically and, and, and uh, why do we have so many homeless people? The government canceled the national look, housing program look, in 1993. Look. No surprise. The Ten, capitalist and the poverty advocate. You know, <laughs> the problem is the poverty advocate requires a capitalist to steal from, okay, because that's the basis of his philosophy. But it requires and, a fair and, and progressive and, tax system, and, which and most people agree no with. Such thing. The only fair taxes, the only taxes I, I ever say are sales taxes, consumption taxes. There shouldn't be property taxes, income taxes, wealth taxes, nothing on anything virtuous or productive, uh, because that just destroys the whole productive system. You know what? System. We're out of time for today. Now, these two are going to continue to talk, <laughs> talk about that, but that's all the time we have. See you again next time. I'm Christine Williams, and from all of us, thank you for watching.